Hello everyone! In case you didn't know, Face Fusion 3.0 was just released. I actually made a super awesome epic trailer for it that showcases the new features and what you can do with it. I highly recommend checking it out. No biases here at all. But the problem with this release is that it changed the install process a lot and made my old install video almost completely useless. I mean, you still get to hear my voice, so that's obviously a good thing. And now I'm here to remedy that problem. I think the design of my last video worked pretty well, so I'm going to stick with that. And in case you don't know what that means, Face Fusion works for Linux, Mac, and Windows. So to make this installation work for all three operating systems, I'll be putting up different steps for each operating system, like this. So it's easy to follow along. If you don't know what operating system you are on, please go away. But also, leave this video playing so I get credit for the view. Also, like the video and leave a comment about how you have no clue what operating system you are on so others can get a chuckle out of it. <laughs> if, after all this is done and you just aren't comfortable with the installation process, I just made a completely new installation video for the software Pinocchio. You can easily install almost any open source AI software with a few simple clicks. This includes Face Fusion. First, you should open up the installation documentation at the address on the screen, which will also be in the description below. You can easily enough follow along with it in this video, but having the page open will make it simpler to copy and paste the commands. For the first stage titled Prepare Your Platform, you can see there are the options for the three operating systems. Go ahead and choose which one you are on. But looking real quickly at all three here, first at the Mac one, you can see that all the steps that are there for the Mac OS are also in the Linux steps and also in the Windows steps. It's just that those two have more steps. Well, sort of. For Macs, there's one more step that is not listed here that is a must before doing any of these. You need to have something called Homebrew installed. If you do not have it installed, here on the screen is another video of mine showing how to download and install it. And like before, the link will be in the description below. With that out of the way, let's begin. Open up Terminal or whatever command line software you use. The very first thing is to have git installed. So all three systems, go ahead and input the first command. I won't say this every time, but either way, just type in what I'm putting up on the screen or copy and paste the command from the installation docs. You can see here that, although they are all doing the same thing, the command is different for all three. So make sure you're following the correct commands. Input the command and hit enter. I had quite a bit more going on as it also updated my homebrew and a bunch of other things that use homebrew. Just know that your terminal might look a bit different. The next command is for Linux only. Go ahead Linux users, type in this command and hit enter. Next is the installation of Miniconda or Conda for all three operating systems. However, Linux has two parts for it, so make sure you get both of those for Linux. During the Conda installation, you will be asked to put in your password, so type it in. You will not see the password being typed, however, and hit enter. This step should take about a minute and a half or less. Next, and the last one for Mac, is FFmpeg. The FFmpeg installed took about three and a half minutes. Finally, for Linux and Windows, you have a codec to install. Congratulations, you're done with stage one. Now on to stage two, prepare your environment. If you're following along with the install docs, go back to the main page. Because the stage is using Conda, which everyone just installed, the commands are the same for all three operating systems, making this much simpler, at least much simpler for me. First, let's initialize Conda. Second, we'll create the Conda environment to run Face Fusion in. Now you can see I got a warning as I already had the Face Fusion environment created. If you already have one and you don't want a separate one for your old Face Fusion install, Feel free to just hit Y and enter. You can always create another one later. 
and then Y again to accept the files being installed. And last, activate the Conda environment. That's it for stage two and on to stage three, install your accelerator. This stage, Mac users get to sit out as Tim Cook doesn't understand the concept of creating good software for AI acceleration. For Mac users, I'll post the time on the screen so you know what time to skip to. Or you can just look at the chapters in the timeline and go to the start of stage four. For the Linux and Windows users, continue to follow along with this stage. But understand this, 90% of the problems that seem to arise on the FaceFusion Discord tend to be because of this next section. Not because of how I wrote it, but just what is being installed. I am never at fault. So this is where you will be installing the accelerator for your type of GPU. If you don't know what kind of GPU you have, you need to figure that out first before continuing. The good news here is that both Linux and Windows have the same commands, except Linux has one additional option, the difference being that it has one for AMD GPUs. Windows doesn't need any additional software for these, so it has one less option in this stage. First, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you have two options, CUDA and Tensor, Tensor or Tensor RT. I've always just read it and never heard someone speak it. Tensor is easier, but probably wrong. CUDA is what will most likely be your best option. Tensor can be better, but only choose this one if you have a high performance NVIDIA GPU. If you want more information on which to choose at this point, I would recommend you go ask on the FaceFusion Discord. But CUDA is definitely the safe option. And speaking of CUDA, here's the command to install that. And here is the command for Tensor. Next up is if you have an AMD Linux. Again, Windows with AMD, you don't need anything. But for Linux, you have two lines to install ROCM, which now I want to call Rockem. The last option is OpenVINO for those with Intel GPUs. Okay, stage three is complete and on to stage four. Wake up, Mac users. The rest of the install is the same for all operating systems. So we're going to stick with just the one box now. First, we're going to clone the GitHub repository of FaceFusion. Simply put, we're downloading FaceFusion to your computer. It's a very small download and should go quite quickly. Now we're going to make sure we're in the new FaceFusion directory. And that's it for stage four. Now, stage five. This stage is very simple. We're just doing the actual install of FaceFusion. Well, at least it should be simple. If you're on Linux and Windows, once you start the install, you'll be asked which accelerator you want to use. This is where you choose which accelerator you installed earlier on. So CUDA, Tensor, Rockham, OpenVINO, or now the option of DirectML for AMD on Windows. But this doesn't happen with Mac. For some reason, this wasn't set up the way it used to be, and that's why you get this error. So instead of just typing Python install.py, you need to input the following longer command. This might change in the future, but even if it does, this will still ensure CoreML is installed for Mac either way. At this point, FaceFusion only takes up barely 20 megabytes of drive space. That's because none of the actual models have been installed. This will change once you've run it for the first time. And we're almost there. Stage six is barely a stage at all, but let's do it really quick. All we're doing is deactivating the environment you started and then starting it back up. This resets it, and I'm not entirely sure why it's needed, but sometimes FaceFusion won't run the first time if you don't do this, so it doesn't hurt. Simply put in the following commands. The first deactivates your environment, and the second starts it back up. Simple, and now stage six is done, and on to the final stage, stage seven. All we're doing here is starting up FaceFusion by running it. Yes, we probably didn't need so many stages for all these commands, but whatever. Either way, here we go. And know that this is different from the old run command. 
Also, you will be downloading over a gigabyte of data right now, so make sure you have a decent internet connection before running this command. Now, just wait for the model downloads to finish and for it to say running on local URL with the following URL. Copy that URL and then paste it into Brave or whatever other inferior browser. At this point, you should hopefully see the new FaceFusion 3.0 in your browser. With it now installed, let's do a quick test to make sure it does what it's supposed to do. I need to make sure I'm on Core ML as a Mac user, and everyone else make sure you choose your correct execution provider based on the accelerator you installed. I need to switch the swapper model to the regular inswapper, as the 16 screws up a lot on the Mac, and I just don't trust it. I am also going to choose the 512 by 512 pixel boost, as that's pretty much all I ever use now, unless I'm just doing a quick test. Let me grab one of the videos I created with Runways Gen 3 for the target. I'm going to use one as the face selector, as there's only the one face in the target video. And then I'll use Skylar Samuels for the source. I'm also going to turn on occlusion as the hair and the gun cover her face a bit. And I'm going to choose many for the detector model, as I believe that should just be the default anyway. Oh, and I need to choose my output path and I'll create a file name too, so that it's easy to find my file afterward. I'm going to hit start on the instant runner and start this up. Instant runner is the same as the old regular way of starting any render. The only difference now is that there are other options for the new queued jobs feature. If you're interested in learning about that, go check out my video that I made explaining all the ins and outs of the new feature. I'd say it's probably my favorite new feature added. Well, combined with pixel boost. I'll have the link to the video in the description below. Same with the one for pixel boost that I made. I don't want everyone to get bored watching my super slow Mac process this, so this is all getting fast forwarded. But before I finish up, I want to make sure you know how to get Face Fusion back up and running after you've quit it. If you've completely left your terminal or even just closed the window you were using, you'll first need to start it back up or open up a new window. Then you need to get back into your Face Fusion directory. So type in CD Face Fusion. Then you need to reactivate your Conda environment. So type in Conda Activate Face Fusion. And then the last part, once again, is to run the application. So type in Python facefusion.py run. If you don't want to have to type that in every time, you can also just make it simple by pasting them all in together separating them by spaces and double ampersands. So it would look like this, and that should do it all for you. One last thing, though this isn't all too important, but as you now have Face Fusion installed, you do not have all the models installed. As it is, right now your Face Fusion directory should only be taking up roughly 1.2 gigabytes. I definitely don't use all the models, but I have a bit of OCD and I like to have all of the models available immediately to me. Otherwise, there may be times you switch over to a specific feature and it takes a long time to switch as it has to download the model before you can even do anything. So what I do is go through every single processor individually and select each of the models. This will force each one of them to download the model and then, if there haven't been updates to it, you shouldn't have to worry about not having a model immediately available to you. This does take some time, so make sure you have a good connection when doing so. With that done, your Face Fusion directory should now be well over 15 gigabytes. Now I'm kind of ending on an unexciting note, but I think that's mostly just because you're excited to go have fun with Face Fusion. And with that in mind, get out of here. But seriously, I hope this worked successfully for you and that you learned a lot. As always, I would very much appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Maybe leave a comment below to help me with the algorithm and heck, why not ring the bell to be notified about my next amazing videos? Thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.